So I'm excited, y'all. I'm working on my Skeeter Starfire. If you've been following the channel, this is, I think, the third video. Um, it's late. As you can tell, it's dark. Something's been bugging me, though. Um, the key will not kill this boat. And I've done some research on it, and I'll show you what I found in case you're having the same problem. So this is a, I'm assuming an 83. I'm pretty sure it's the original 83 Johnson J150 TCLE or something like that. It's tilt electric trim. Um, so there's some parts on here that you should probably know about that I had to educate myself on. This is called the power pack right here. The part number on it, the Johnson original part number is 582138. And I actually have one of these ordered. This is basically the ECM of this old style engine. Uh, it's this old two stroke. This is what tells this thing what cylinders to fire. The firing order is actually one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so um, it's easy as that. But here's what you need to know. So coming over here to the left side of this motor, you have this big engine control harness that comes in right here and then everything routes around through that. So the problem that I've had with this boat is, is if I turn the key to off, the boat will sputter but it won't die. You turn it back to on and it'll rev back up. And I'm like, what is the deal with this boat? Why is it doing this? So, here's what I discovered. That goes there, I think. And then that goes there. While I'm thinking about that. So, this is the power pack. This is basically the BCM. If you're having similar problems, there's a couple of ways to test this. It could either be your ignition switch or it could be this power pack. So one way to test it is find this black with a white with a yellow stripe wire that comes into your control harness here. You can see there's a little nick in the insulation because I took a test light because it's easy to probe. One forum said to cut the wire, strip the insulation back. I found a good bolt that I know is grounded like that one and jam this up in there up under the jacket and made a connection that makes the engine made the engine sputter just like the key did but it wouldn't kill it i've been having to use the the primer lever to choke this thing out and kill it because otherwise it just sit there and run and it doesn't have a fuel shut off on it right now which is an issue that i'm gonna have to correct so if you ground this out and it does not kill your engine then that means most likely it's going to be a coil pack or a power pack because the ignition um, what that key does is it signals this via ground to kill the engine so this like I said sends power um, to tell it to ground out and I'm not a hundred percent sure on the specifics of what it grounds out if it grounds the spark out or what it does but anyway this routes up goes through these two power packs there's one of these on each side one for each head so, the problem that I was having is, like I said, it wouldn't kill it. So, one of my diagnostics was, is I went through and while it was running, I popped the spark plug off of one side to see if it changed. Turn the key off, to the off position, and with it sputtering like it does, the obvious change in idle, pull a spark plug cap off, see if it changes the idle. If it does not change the idle, then that means it's on the other side. This was the particular side that was having issues with the coil pack. You can also go in here and find the black with yellow stripe wire in this harness, and you can try to ground it there as well. It'll be in this side going up over here to the distributors. Or to the, yeah. So, another thing, make sure that you have good ground on this wire right here, because that's where it actually gets ground. Or grounded through the screw, the mounting screw. And... Like I said, with the engine running and the key off, pull a spark plug cap, see if it changes the sound of the idle. If it does, that means you're on the right side. The next thing I did was kill the motor, pull all three spark plug caps off on this side, and then crank the motor. It's not great for it, don't do it, but for a few seconds to run the test, it's going to be hard to start. You'll probably have to give it some extra fuel. Give it some fuel, crank it up, and then turn the key back off and see if it kills it. If it did, that's the side that your problem is on. Now the other way to verify this is what I did, which I just swapped these two coil packs out to see which one was which, which to make sure that that's what was bad. Now, ironically enough, I already have one ordered from Amazon, 
was on sale for about $117. Today is Saturday, and I'm supposed to get it Monday. But ironically enough, since I swapped those coil packs over, the key works now. So, I'm pretty much good to go. Those are the things that were hanging me up was it wouldn't kill the boat. It wouldn't kill the motor. Kill the boat. Wouldn't kill the motor when I turned the key off. So now I should have full safety if I crank it. And pull the safety stop. It kills the motor. And that's one of the things that I'm pretty big on. I used to borrow my friend's boat. And I never wore the safety lanyard because the ro it was made out of like a nylon rope. And the lanyard was just sun rotted to shreds. So I never wore it. Which probably wasn't the wisest thing to do. I was talking to a guy the other day that I bought my fish finder from. And he said, wear your life jacket and wear the lanyard. Because if you fly out of that boat, you want that boat to die. It's a liability to anybody else on the water. Do a lot of damage. If it's an unmanned boat, plus you don't want to have to go swim and get it. Best case scenario, you're just idling and it just idles away. Because I don't have a hot foot, so if I come out of the seat, this thing's going to be pinned wherever this throttle is at. So that's how you troubleshoot the uh, a Johnson won't die issue, is what we'll call it. Um, and I all I did was Google Johnson J150 won't die when the key is off and that brought me to some forums and some some uh answered questions online and led me to the power pack a simple google search of the power pack brought me up an image of it and i was able to find it based off of the image and then i found the part number on the power pack looked up the part number and i believe cdi is the company that makes the power pack the new one that's coming but i know now that when it comes in, if I have any more issues, it's most likely going to be the one on the right side. Because I swapped them. The left side was the side that wouldn't die. And I swapped them over. Now it's working. So the right side is now the one that is potentially bad. But I hope that helps you if you're having problems with a uh, Johnson J150 won't die. Uh, I was talking to one of my friends who is apparently very knowledgeable about bass boats i didn't even know that until the other day i asked him if he ever wanted to go fishing with me to let me know and he said that he was kind of a bass boat um what did he say a bass boat research nut is what he said he's about as knowledgeable about bass boats as i am about dodge trucks apparently so he told me that there is a dividing year close to the year of this mo this motor where they went to the gt series and that those might be different but he wasn't a hundred percent sure if it would affect this issue but he agreed it was probably the power pack and i'm glad i did some diagnostics on it because now i could take the boat out on the water tomorrow and test it out because i really didn't want to take it out and try it without having a good way to kill it so now that that's figured out this is the next thing got to adjust the linkage because the high idle or the elevated idle lever won't stay down so it's not actually engaged with it popped up like that. And it does go down. I have to remount this throttle box. But it does go back down when you rev it up because it obviously engages it. But that's the next thing that I have to figure out is why that's not staying down. And I've opened this up checking the ignition key earlier when I was working on the, the engine problem. I can't find any reason why it would do that. See, it doesn't hit resistance until you get to there. And if you watch the motor, that's the range of motion that it has. Right there is the range of motion. So anyway, that's it for me. I'm going to put this uh, gearbox back on. Gearbox. It's the throttle box back on. And... Uh, put the motor cover back on and I've debated covering it up because I just vacuumed this boat out on Thursday and I parked it under this stupid oak tree and now it's covered in catkins debated putting the cover on it's really windy right now I don't really want to deal with it don't want to fight it and I'm probably gonna take it out tomorrow anyway so I guess it's just gonna get a few more little 
yellow catkins on it before I take it out tomorrow, and then I'll probably vacuum it out. But anyway, I hope that helps you, and um, sure helped me figuring that out. So if I can help somebody else out with my experience, I would love to. Thanks for watching East Texas Fishing Adventures. I am Wesley.